Yeah. So, so thank we, you for having me here. Yeah, thanks for coming over here. Um, lovely future scenario. We're talking about that one right now. But first of all, I want to know something a little bit more personal about you. So um, what was your last post in social media? Oh. Oh, that was, sorry, that was um, a black and white picture of the VW of the Volkswagen one liter car that I was um, privileged enough to work on. Um, and yeah, that was a, a post on so social media. So your next post will be, it was so awesome yeah. that shift here at <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've all right. Of course. <laughs> um, when we talk about the future design of cars, um, what is the scope for it? Yeah, we, like when, when, when we think about um, the future, how the way we, we deal with it is um, our scope is, let's say, from 2025 to 2035 in this kind of scope. And um, yeah, we try to, to look at it from a helicopter perspective. That's why we are here, right? So we look at cities, but we also look at the rural areas. And then we um, try to learn from our, from our research. And we look, we, we look a lot, we watch a lot of science fiction movies. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, we, have a global, we have a global network of... Um, you really must stay because we have here uh, a chat <laughs> with uh, Jay Ward I, from I Pixelator. Stay. Yeah, maybe we'll figure out something new. It's always inspiring. <laughs> um, no, we are in, in the Volkswagen Group. We have a global network of, um, of yeah, group innovation, we call it. And it's engineers, researchers, designers. And they are spread over the, over the world and Silicon Valley, in China, in, of course in Europe, in Barcelona for example. So, and we are collecting a lot of um, data, we are making a lot of research, we actually speak a lot to people, so we are interviewing people, we are doing user tests with uh, simple prototypes, so we are trying to get a real good understanding about the needs, the wishes and the, yeah, the dreams of, um, of, of, of the citizens. Yeah. yeah, you say you're analyzing um, global trends, but isn't mobility something quite regional or maybe even local? Because we have the cities, we have the mega cities, we have the villages, and it's quite different here in Berlin than to, let's say, Hong Kong. Absolutely. Um, and also like the rural areas, we, we sometimes, especially in summits like this, we always have this, uh, the cities in focus because they are growing, but the rural areas we must not forget, and they are totally different needs. Mm, but even the cities, the global cities, are totally different. It's, it's true. I mean, I'm, from time to time I have the chance to be in China and it's, it's totally different, the behavior and the, how they work with data, how they accept digitalization, how they uh, see rather the, the, um, the improvements for their life uh, compared to Europe, where we are very careful who we give our data and so on. So, Mobility and transportation is, is a local issue and um, the example of Barcelona is very nice um, um, and Berlin is an extreme uh, city as well. Like, um, yeah, it, took, it took most of us probably an hour to get here. Um, like we have, we have 1.2 million passenger cars in Berlin um, standing around. Stand, standing around. Um, this is, for example, also something that really makes me nervous and I want to change. <laughs> When we talk about uh, the future of mobility, we were also talking about uh, the sharing economy, which mm. is Volkswagen also in. You have uh, WeShare, for example, the electric uh, vehicles. I saw them as well here in Berlin. Um, unfortunately, not in Mainz, but uh, <laughs> that's where I come from. So you have to go there as well. Um, but why should the customers take care of automotive design when it's not their own car, when we all just share a car? It's not my own. Why should I take care of it? Yeah, mobility gets most likely in many places. Mobility will become a service, and um, and yeah, owning a car in a city. We heard it before. It doesn't make sense anymore. Here in Berlin, the ownership of cars goes down. It's it's just a sorry. It's a pain. It costs you a lot of money, and and you're, you're stuck. So. Sharing mobility is definitely a, a designing issue we, we need to face and we need to design shared mobility op, uh, devices, if you like cars, uh, scooters, whatever, we need to share them differently than we share vehicles that we normally own. Right? Today, when we buy a car today, we are spending a lot of money and we need to keep it for many years and it needs to look good when we sell it again. 
all this will change when we think in, in, in mobility as a service and kind of being a, yeah, a customer of a mobility service. But at the end, of course, I want the right mobility device for my needs. So um, that's why even these vehicles, the shared vehicles, the autonomous vehicles, they need to be designed for different purposes. And yeah, and for different customers, let's yeah. uh, have a look at that because um, when you talk about future mobility, it's also autonomous. So we have yeah. a new group of, uh, yeah, a new target group, which are children, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have something prepared for them? Because I, I'm pretty sure they don't yeah. want to drive just through the streets when we see those vehicles you design, like the Cedric here in the movie. They want to do other things. like yeah, exactly. Like Landing on a moon or something like yeah, that. <laughs> we, we have this diversity. It was mentioned also before, um, from a speaker before, we have the diversity in mobility. So I'm also totally convinced that we have a wider spread of vehicles and of use cases. And children are f a fantastic group to, to work with and to, to, to see what they, what, what they are fascinated with. So imagine the school bus. We saw one school bus before. Imagine vehicles where the kids can be the drivers. So mom and dad, they can let loose, they can let them go. If they want, they can watch them, yes. But actually, it's more fun for the kids to be amongst them, to play or to educate themselves. Like, let's say they, they go together in a group, and instead of just looking out of the window and watching, uh, watching the city passing by, you could have, through augmented reality, you could have other overlays so that you could learn, you could educate yourself or entertain yourself. So why shouldn't the windows in, in the car, why shouldn't they be an area where you project uh, fantasy? So For the example, the windshield. You yeah, can the windshield and the other windows. Cool. So the, the kids could become a pilot, a uh, starfighter pilot uh, or, or a submarine pilot, yeah? So the, the buildings and the traffic around you could become a, a coral reef and, and fish and so on. Yeah. So is it just for the children? Because it sounds really very cool. I want to do that as well. So <laughs> maybe I'm your customer as well in this case. Um, you said you're doing, um, you analyze trends and you have the eye on uh, new target groups, but um, the world is turning faster and faster yeah. and technology is developing very fast. So yeah. in a production like the automotive sector, I think it's kind of hard to really say what is in about 10 years yeah. because you have a longer uh, period of development, right? So how do you manage this one? Yeah, f first of all, designers have to rethink their job. Like, in, in the past, we, we really did design a car uh, which had to last for many years. And now we have to, in this, in this rapidly f accelerating business, we need to design much faster f because the vehicles will be permanent, permanent moving. So they will, they will get um, their mileage very soon. So they will, we will need to repair them. We will need to refit them. We will need to adjust them to the uses. So we need to think differently for the use cases and we have to be much more flexible in design. Um, we, as a designer, we are not in the, today already and in the future, it's more about designing experiences. Um, it was a speaker before he said, um, I think it was uh, John from Ford, he said like designers are not designing cars anymore, they are des designing systems. I would add and say actually designers are designing experiences because experiences and yeah, moments, magic moments is what everybody is looking for and what people are collecting and what people are putting on the social media and liking. So it's about the experiences and of course our, as designer our, our job, our role is, is to, to offer the positive, greatest experiences we can give to the people. So this is what, uh, how our job is changing. It sounds like a very interesting job and um, let's have a, a short, really a very short forecast uh, to our future. Um, yesterday, Boyd Cohen said from IMOB, we just go into the air because we screwed up the ground. So what do you say about that one? <laughs> Good one. Um, <laughs> science fiction again? No, it's not <laughs> science fiction. Like air taxis and flying cars are not science fiction anymore. It's actually technology wise, it's actually easier to get an autonomous car into the air than getting an autonomous car in the city because in the air we don't have pedestrians, no cyclists, no dogs. So it's much easier to control traffic in the air. 
unfortunately, it costs a lot of energy to get a vehicle with passengers into the air. So that's why it will be, an, uh, in terms of energy, an expensive use case. So it will stay, it will stay most likely a, a premium mobility service where certainly people who can afford it will love to take that kind of vision to fly from their building straight to the airport and, and change there to the, to the, to the continental flight. But it will be a, I think it will be a niche market. Yeah, and they have to uh, take care about the noise because it could be really, good really point. loud. Very good um, yeah, that was a quick chat about our future and how important design is. Really glad that you're here. Maybe you're here for some other questions in the uh, break, in the lunch break. And I say thanks again and a big applause for Peter Wauder. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much. Yeah.